Hi, I'm Teacher Im and I create videos to help my students score better in their STPM Maths D paper and I hope my videos can be helpful for you too. Well, today I am making this requested video. Requested by who? Hmm, usually most of my videos are requested by student, my student. Okay, but this time this video are requested by your teachers okay your teacher in your school yeah they requested okay we we teachers we have our own group in telegram group so they requested that i make a video on why their student when they come out from the exam hall they told their teachers that they can answer the question but however when the result come out they either miss their a or they did miss their pass or they, they couldn't score uh, well in the paper so these videos are for you who miss your pass or miss your a or just didn't do as didn't get the result as expected in this video i'm going to talk about 10 common mistakes made by students in STPM. Videos coming up right after the intro. I would like to talk about the first common mistake. Right? The first type of mistake that students usually make is being careless when answering the question. Look at this part here. It started with a minus 12 and slowly it becomes plus 2. Why? It is a callous. Most probably by, by writing it too near, okay, maybe, or whether the students didn't notice that it is supposed to be minus 12, but because they wrote it too near, it become a callous mistake where they already joined the minus 12 to become plus 2. Okay, minus 12 to become plus 2. So, one of the common mistakes that students make is by copying the writing, maybe a bit messy, or writing too fast and they created uh, symbols uh, or answered the question carelessly. Okay, so please be careful when you write your answer because this type of mistake, when you do inside the question, okay, you don't even know that that is a mistake because you, for you, it looks like a minus 12, but for a, the examiner, it actually looked like a plus 2. So, it could cost you some marks. Number 2, using the wrong symbol. Okay, if you like just now, you copied the wrong, uh, you, you wrote it as minus 12, but it looks like a plus two so that is one thing that you are you need to take note of and the second one is maybe you will come from a minus and then when you copy it down when you slowly answer the question it suddenly turned into a plus okay it suddenly turned into a plus oh you sh that is the common mistake usually negative and positive uh, are the common mistake that you you usually see in uh, students working they will copy down the answer and suddenly from a minus will transform to a positive or when they like for this case 10 minus 10 uh, and then it will transform to some uh, uh, whether the they, they use the negative value plus the positive value and suddenly it transforms either to the negative answer or a positive answer okay so you you have to be very careful when using symbols or you forgot to write the equals to yeah students love to like write, write down complete answers beautiful complete answers but however if the answers did not comes with an equals to it is actually meaningless because mathematic equation that is supposed to be equals to right in front of the answer okay so if you let's say you forgot to put the equals to it might cost you quite a lot of marks even though all your working is correct the teacher or the examiner might not even want to see the answer anymore they just skip it and then you will lose the marks for that part okay so make sure make sure 
when you do your question make sure you put in the equals to sign for, sign for every element or for every answer that you put right in okay next the fourth type of mistake is the worst one because most of the time if the student copied the wrong question they never recheck back what they copied in the previous from the question okay they never recheck and then they will start to do the question when you start to do the question without rechecking the whether you copied the correct question or not you will thought you know how to do the question because most of the answers will come out it will come out perfectly but however the and the question that you copied at the beginning is wrong so the mistake is like you don't even know that there is a mistake when you come out and the result come out oh there i didn't get a good result just because in the beginning you already copied the wrong question so at the lower part of the quest, uh, answer you no longer can get any marks so be careful with what you copied okay so I will suggest after you copy, recheck. Okay, recheck before you start your work. Just check it before you start your work. Okay, it will it will be safer to do so. Okay, next one. The next one is the answer has no conclusion or it is not simplified, which means when you answer your question, the answer still can be factorized. Okay, but you didn't put in the factorization uh, at the end of the answer. So you lose well, like one mark. If Just imagine if, if for every question, you did not write the conclusion that is needed inside the answer. For example, uh, in your matrix question, okay, the question asks you to solve the, mat uh, the simultaneous equation using matrix and they want the value of x, y, z. Sometimes this x, y, z values comes with... Uh, with units okay for example 7x okay so or maybe in rm in in the the uh, money value okay the value of money so if inside the conclusion you need to explain x represent for example rm3 ringgit okay so but you didn't do that you only get the value of xyz from the calculation from matrix okay doing from matrix so you didn't write the final conclusion that will cost you marks okay which means whenever you want to end a question you have to see carefully uh, what the question wants for example some more is decimal places this one's very common okay in, among the students the question says they wanted three decimal places however the students own answer four significant feature or two decimal places or four decimal places so it did not fulfill the question so if you didn't answer the final touch of the question for example factorization uh, putting it in the proper fraction okay uh, putting your answer in proper fraction didn't write it in uh, the uh, the conclusion especially in statistics m3 okay you didn't write your answer in the full conclusion that will cost you one mark so just imagine for every question you got uh, in stbm you got seven questions and every question you forgot to do the conclusion or the final touch of the answer you lost like seven marks that's a lot of marks okay so please make sure every time when you conclude finish a question check and see if the question actually want a set of conclusion okay or maybe uh, for example your answer uh, in equality they need the answer in the format of uh, uh, notation or set notation so if you just put it in raw in equality form you might not get the full to the full marks okay so make sure the final touch of your answer is the perfect one Okay, why either you factorize completely or you write a conclusion what is the, the conclusion which they need in the question or make sure the decimal places are correct okay or how many decimal places or how many significant feature it is always stated in the question so you just need to check what the question needed okay be careful on that right next next is 
forgetting the symbol. Most of the time, students will do the question and they will, inside their brain, they will tell, okay, I will put in the, the symbols later. But later never came. Aha, like this student. You see, it, the question started with the square root. So most probably she will say, oh, okay, the square root is too big. Later, I will use a ruler or to do that. But, and then she forgot and then she lost all the square root. Okay, she forgot about the square root. So these kind of symbols are very important because it doesn't, it is a different meaning. Without the square root, this question is wrong. Okay, sometimes and the most common one is the students forgetting to do the line, the fraction. Sometimes you have uh, fr big fractions. And then that line, you will say, okay, I'll finish first and then I will use the ruler and nicely draw the line. And then this fraction line is forgotten. So all these lines and signs and symbols are very, very important. Don't wait, okay? Don't wait until the end of the answer. Don't wait until you do finish and then you say, I will put in later. Most of the time, the later never came. Okay, most of the time the student will forget about it and then there the marks is gone. Okay, so please, uh, it is ugly if you just use freehand, but never mind. Okay, but never mind. Don't, don't like wait. If you really want to use a ruler, use it there and then. Okay, use it there and then so that when you do the question the time, you will not miss your marks okay so don't forget the signs and the symbols the 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 fraction line the square roots please don't forget about it okay next number seven putting all the symbols and sign at the wrong places okay you when you write your answer in stpm make sure you know where you want to put the plus minus, where you want to put the brackets, where you want to put the squares, all right? Because all these symbols at their different position, it gives the, the equation a different meaning, okay? It gives the equation a different meaning. It, you have to make sure when you write the symbols, you know what actually it meant and where you should write it. Don't simply put brackets. For example, let me, this is one, the one that I show here is one of the examples, not uh, putting at the plus minus because uh, not knowing where to put the brackets. Okay, for example, this student, she, he just write, uh, or she or he just wrote GX without the bracket. GX in mathematics is meaningless, but G bracket X has a meaning. Okay, G bracket X actually has a meaning. And then over here, she put GX and then the square is outside. It is, the working is correct. So for her, it is correct, but in mathematical, it's wrong. Okay, it is wrong. So which means she couldn't get any marks, although all that she wrote here might be correct. So be careful about that. Another thing that happens like symbols and signs like this uh, is usually matrix. Students, they love to put the square for the matrix. Matrix is a round brackets, okay? So you have to be careful when you want to use the matrix, a uh, round bracket, square brackets, um, even in vectors, okay? When you want to put the, the wave line, the straight, the line under the number, okay? Be because if you don't, if you're doing vector question without the wave or the line, that equation has turned into normal algebra, okay? The only way that you can know that you are doing vector question is having the vector symbol, for example, the A bar, okay, and the, or the A wave, all right, or the, uh, the arrow on top of OA. So those are symbols that you need to take note of. Okay, without those symbol in question in the exam paper, they for vector they might bold the numbers, they might bold the A or they, they might bold the B. Those are typing in SDB when you when you, in in exam when you write the vector, you can't bold the num the the words right. You can't bold the A. So the only way that you can show 
the examiner that you are doing a vector question is by putting in the vector symbols okay so that is all the sign and the symbol okay uh, some more what type okay the the uh, approximation symbol and uh, the three lines for uh, partial fraction okay that's that symbol of three lines uh, equivalent to all right so uh, you have to know when to use what signs and where to put them when you want for example someone um, let's say the uh, sequence and series the plus dot 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 behind okay so when the plus dot 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 uh, disappear what will happen so the next step should be the uh, the approximation the answer will have approximation all these details your teacher would have taught you okay i didn't want to like teach you that but i will mention i just mentioned it here so that i get i hope you get what i meant okay so where when and where uh, what to symbol to use in your calculation is very very sim important okay like even simple brackets like this gx you didn't write the x the brackets it meant another meaning already so make sure you know when and where to put your symbols don't make mistake number seven okay let's check out this mistake okay this mistake also is very common sometimes in the stbm question they will ask you to prove the left hand side is equivalent to the right hand side okay to do this type of question left to prove that the the left hand side is equivalent to the right hand side it is best to do the left hand side get the answer and then do the right hand side get the answer then you say therefore left hand side is equivalent to right hand side you should not do the answer question proving question like this okay you should not do proving question all these proving question they have their steps okay you shouldn't do the left hand side and right hand side together and then suddenly at the end you say oh two five two is not equals to 72 is this is not the correct way of writing the answers for proving you should do like left hand side first and then right hand side okay means you finish the working for left hand side you get the answer you finish the working for right hand side you get the answer and then at the end the conclusion will be the left hand side is not equivalent to the right hand side or the left hand side is equivalent to the right right hand side okay so don't do proving question together another type of mistake that happened in proving question is when the student do proving question for uh, aromatic or uh, geometry if the question say prove that this is an aromatic or prove this is a geometry question students actually put in numbers okay when you do proving question in in uh it is best to use unknown which means let's say if i want to prove that that equation that sequence or that series is a geometry then i have to do like t n plus one divide by t n means i use unknown okay your teach you if you don't understand what i meant you can ask your teacher what what actually miss uh teacher in say uh use uh proving with unknown okay for example i gave is t n plus one divide by t n to get the ratio common ratio okay so those are things that you have to take note when you do proving question no left equals to right no numbers no solid numbers you have to prove using theory theorems or unknown and then you do the conclusion that is what they need to prove okay so if you don't understand this part uh, you can ask your teacher your teacher uh, i'm sure will, will be willing to help you but if you really really still don't understand what i meant you can put a comment in the comment uh, box okay and i will try to help you on that too okay i will try to make sure you understand what i meant by uh, using theory theorem or or unknown to prove uh, some of the things that they need to prove inside the question okay all right number nine number nine is also a may a something that caused the students a lot of mistake which is they were not sure 
okay about the they they were so sure I, I have to say they were so sure that the answer is correct but actually they act they actually put in the details inside the calculator and press the calculator wrongly and the result come out when the answer come out it is the wrong answer so when you do your question the time make sure your calculator skill is good try to use the calculator that you are used to don't go and buy a calculator a new calculator because your somebody told you it is better and use it one week after before the uh, use buy the calculator one week before the exam and use it during exam and your even your fingers are not used of the keys on the calculator yet okay so you have to make sure the calculator that you are using you know how to press especially in from six you have like binomial expansion you need to have so many numbers you want to put in okay or in statistic where your numbers are so there are so many of those numbers that you need to key in and press equals to and then that answer that came out is wrong okay and then even what is even worse is that answer need to be used for the second or third part of the question then that will cost you a lot of marks so when you press the calculator make sure your calculator skill is good okay make sure your calculator skill is good so that when you press the calculator it is 100 percent correct and make sure you don't press the wrong key okay you don't press the wrong key okay so that calculator skill will cost a lot of marks and definitely especially when the answer will be needed in the second or third part of the question okay so just be careful about that next is not knowing the mathematic terms well in during lower form okay during lower form you only you need to know how to solve the question then you can go into the exam hall and voila you can come out with an a but in stbm you need to know the terms for example if they ask you to do Gaussian elimination, they ask you to do elementary row operation, do you know what is it? Okay, if they ask you for singular matrix, do you know what is it? Sum of infinite series versus sum of infinity, do you know the difference? Ordinance and stripes, same two. Okay, ordinance and stripe in trapezium rule, do you know the difference between them? Initial approximation, discrete continue or, or versus continuous uh, data. Okay, significant level, sample mean, mutual exclusive and independence. All these terms are very important because inside the question, they might just use the terms and then ask you, find the singular matrix of this question. Oh, okay, then you say, oh, okay, what is singular matrix? Uh, that is when it comes in okay so these terms are used in the question so in mathematics before you go for the exam you make sure you not only learn the formula or not only learn the steps you also need to know the terms that they use inside the math inside the question so that when you go for for the exam for example if they say i want gauss jordan Okay, or I want Gaussian. You have to know when to stop, when to start, where to start, how to start. Okay, with the different technique or different terms. If they mention the terms inside the question, for example, if they already mentioned inside the question, they want you to use elementary row operation and you use another method to solve your question, you will not get your marks okay you will not get your marks so which means if they ask you to use that technique okay to solve that question and you use another or they wanted to you to find this thing using that term for example they want you to find the significant level and you calculated another things it is useless is useless for your marks but you thought okay i did it correctly i did uh, whatever i feel that is correct but anyway the terms is wrong and then you use the wrong technique it looks like a correct one to you but in the in the exam marking scheme that is wrong
okay so please make sure you know your terms before you enter the exam hall right i would like to give you a bonus all right not labeling a your graph well i started i thought i want to give 10 common mistakes but then i thought there's one more mistake that students always do they what they did is they will sketch the graph if you notice in your exam paper sketching of graph usually is three marks the least okay sometimes two sometimes three but three is the least um, that most common marks that you get so this is an analytic geometry okay this student drew a hyperbola and then without any labels without any details about the hyperbola okay and the graph is like very blur and could nobody can give marks for this graph okay usually in graphing they will say the shape of the graph the intersection point or the coordinates and then the third marks is usually all correct so maybe if even if I want to put in the marks, I might give the marks for D1. Okay, for the, the the diagram itself means the shape of the graph is correct. Okay, no, no, no problem. The shape is correct. But however, I do not know what is <laughs> this graph about. Although I know uh it is a hyperbola, but I could not figure out this hyperbola belongs to what equation okay so the examiner will need you to label the x-axis the y-axis all the intersection point and also the name of the graph okay if you are drawing uh if you are sketching not drawing a uh, sketching uh lawn then you have to write in fx equals to whatever uh, lawn to x or something like that you have to label your graph correctly if not you will lose a lot of marks because graphing is three marks without the coordinates you might lose one without the labels you must you will lose more marks okay maybe you only will get the marks for the shape of your graph all right so that's the common mistake that student made okay so how to avoid this common mistake how to avoid well look at this this is an actual student work you know so look at this mess mistakes usually comes when you are messy when you are messy you yourself could not read what you are writing not to mention a teacher a teacher definitely it will have a hard time trying to figure out what you wrote so to avoid making mistakes you have to make sure your writing is nice okay and just make sure you do your you write your answer downwards okay don't like put together like this all jumble out together the papers are free you can put up your hand and ask the examiner to give you the paper to sit for your exam the papers are free except if of course if you repeat then you already paid for the paper you paid 50 ringgit if you repeat then you paid 50 ringgit for the paper <laughs> why want to write in why want to jam all the answers in one piece just write downwards and make sure the examiner can see your working nicely and neatly okay don't jumble out everything and don't like mess up if you have a mistake just cut it away using a ruler cut it away and do the second line don't go and jumble up everything okay so when you are it is, your work is less messy then you have a better you have better view of your answer even if there is a mistake you yourself when you recheck your answer you yourself can find your mistake okay second thing that i would like to give you as a bonus is to use this concept think out loud i'm not asking you that to measure oh okay two plus three plus seven or are you everything you you want to say out during the exam because you are going to disturb your friend on the left the front and the back okay when i will ask you to think out loud is you think under your breath like for example uh, seven plus two plus ten okay something like that so which means you are using your brain okay to 
to to read out all the symbols for example uh i have the limit of infin uh, x moving to infinity so you read out the symbols uh correctly okay inside your brain so that when you do the question the time when you say divide you inside your brain you say divide you don't say per okay you so all these details or names or uh, the things that you mention in the brain okay will lead you to have a better answer okay so try not to not to have messy answers and try to think aloud means not using your mouth too loudly until you disturb the one in front and the back and the side of your exam hall but try to think use uh, using full symbol inside your brain if you say equals to you say uh okay fx equals to inside your brain okay think inside your brain with full words and full symbol and full uh terms in mathematics you don't just say uh this and that and let's bring this over bring that over you say you inside your brain you say bring fx over okay bring the negative over okay you use some terms like that inside your brain so automatically your brain will know what to when your hand will know what to write okay if you bring say i say i bring this negative over this become positive so your hand will write the positive answer or you bring this positive value over it turns into a negative then your hand will actually write that negative value this that there, there is a experiment done by a uh, professors in the university you can read up about this thing out loud technique okay all right so that's the end of this video i don't know how long is it but i it seems that it's quite long so i hope that these details because it's requested by teacher i hope these details can help you score better and get your a i hope to see you again for more videos on mathematics and do subscribe and like this video it, it helps you to understand more uh, about your mistakes and see you again bye bye